All right. That's my next Russell weakest U.S. market. Trying to grab some weak stocks out of that of that bunch. Preparing myself for the the rollover of the index of the U.S. markets. As long as Russell is not making new highs, as long as uh, it's uh, starting to create divergence with the SPX, for me, those are my go-to singles, and I'm going to keep monitoring uh, the economic data, unemployment rate, uh, ISM, uh, industrial production, all those metrics, and to keep an eye on that. So while I think we need another six, eight months for really those economic metrics to start rolling over and getting priced in, in the SPX and the higher stocks, we're starting to see divergence. The first signs that we saw back this summer of the um, Russell not, evil, not able to do new highs while the SPX was, we're approaching uh, that phase right now. So I'm getting a lead ahead and I'm preparing myself instead of... Uh, fear of missing out on the rally of the SPX, which uh, my framework is keeping me out of. I'm going to concentrate on uh, getting ahead uh, with uh, the eventual downturn in the Russell. And if it doesn't pan out, and if uh, the index doesn't uh, turn over and it makes new highs, then I'll revise and I'll, uh, I'll reassess uh, the whole weight of evidence. So here's my list, my Russell 2000, all 2000, giving a hard time for my trading view uh, platform. And I went through a top. I'm always sorting them by a daily, by which one are really having a hard time. And usually you don't want to see minus 28%, minus 8% in your stocks when they're in stage two. That's the strong, strong pullbacks. You want the small, small daily increments on the pullbacks, strong moves upwards. And this is the one that caught my attention, CVTI. So let's do it. Monthly candle chart, huge, huge uh, pattern, broke down, target reach, nice, awesome bottom, refused to make lower lows on the monthly candle chart. This is just awesome. See, these are monthly candles, so I'm in no rush. It takes time, but you want to grab it when it's about here when you're starting to explode out of a base. And look at that. If somebody would have bought here, oh, look, you've been moving up so, so much. Well, you need to let it move up to grab those really, really big moves. You want that momentum behind. So here's that big base. You could have entered maybe here, monthly candle chart. Base, 12 monthly average, trying to go upwards. When you had a close above, could have went there. Sideways move, you could have got whipsawed, so that wasn't quite ready. Uh, if you remember some of my earlier podcasts on Stan Weinstein's state analysis, there's the embryonic breakout. So this is the first one here, just you're breaking out of that stage four decline. Then, oh, another thrust up, but still don't quite got the momentum, pulls back, you could get whipsawed. And after that, the second and third breakouts, really you're starting to get momentum. And the more the price action is above that 12 month moving average or that 30 week moving average, the more it's skewing it upwards, you're getting more and more tension, and then you're exploding. And that's where you want to maximize your time. Here, here you could have hit some resistance right here. You pierce through, but after that, this is really, once you're out of this uh, congestion zone, then you're just getting sucked up. Far away from 12 month moving average, having a hard time. Almost tweezer tops, sign to get out. Uh, maybe on the weekly, we got uh, some 30 week uh, moving average violation, trend line violation. Try to find some excuses to get out here. And after that, your final warning sign would have been uh, when you close below that 12 month average. So, where are we today, guys? You had another breakout here going through, but right here, you're hitting that monthly defined. So that, that hurts. These all-time highs, monthly defined resistance. Oh, we're hitting in some here. Sellers coming in. No, no. And after that, you're getting closer and closer to that 12 month average. And then you're starting to hog it and then close below. So here's the one, two, three, four month top. Then you got chart morse. Target moves the price action. Here you go. Bigger top, broke down. 
Let's see what my target was right here. Ooh. Top to bottom added to the breakdown line and the target was reached after this close right here in uh, October. One, two months later, triggered out. That's if you use a swing roll. You're starting to hit some of the support right here. Previous uh, resistance turned support. And now you're just creating a bigger pattern. And you steal that right here. Then you got a bigger, bigger pattern right here. It's trying to form out. So we're approaching important support. Um, price action bounce off this wall, this previous support and uh, this previous resistance turned support. We bounce up. Oh, it's going back up. So in January, you could have said to the moon, but then you got close to that. Uh, again, another wall, pure support and resistance, close to a declining 12 month three average. And what's that? Lower highs, lower highs, still in a downtrend. You don't know how deep it's going to go. And until it closes back above the 12 month three average, uh, you don't want to go long and you want to look for opportunities to get short. And we might have had one a few weeks back. So here's my monthly defined support identified. I think there's might be more here. So we're going to zoom in on Stan Weinstein stage analysis on the weekly. Oh, not the SPX, the Russell. I'm going to compare it to the Russell and I want really underperformers. And look at that CVTI long time underperformer of the Russell. So imagine that the Russell is underperforming the SPX most of the time except when you're in uptrend and uh, people are risk on and then the small caps are getting all that extra money people want those good returns high percentage returns well when you go down it's the inverse people take out money of those riskier stocks they put them in the uh, spx or those blue chips those top 100 companies so the russell's underperforming the spx and this stock is underperforming the russell weak 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 so that's the type of weakness you're looking for Red, remember again, I keep repeating, but for new listeners, uh, on the Mansfield relative strength, this indicator combines a few elements from Stan, underperforming the index or whatever stock you're comparing it to, a declining 30 week moving average, below 30 week moving average, and then get the red overlay, and that is bearish. And the green one is bullish. When it's gray, so you don't have all those elements together. So, downtrend from early October, but we're not quite in because we have a lot of defined Ichimoku cloud defined support that could have brought the price action back up. So if you don't want to get in here, you'd wait, wait in here on this close right here. And then uh, November, you had that close below Ichimoku cloud, below monthly defined support. You could have taken half position here, bounce off monthly defined while uh, resistance turn support, sink a little bit through. Now strong, strong move up. And now we're hitting that 30 week moving average, hitting, we were close to that 12 month moving average, uh, getting close to that monthly defined support and resistance. Great re entry right here, taking a posi another position, and then you go riding it down. So CVTI, lower highs on the monthly, lower highs on the weekly position, pull back another position here, and after that you're going down. So is this going to pull? We're still in downtrend. Is this going to go down this time, go through? Maybe sink a little lower through those other levels and then go back up. And now hit the support, turn resistance, giving us another opportunity to enter short right here and creating those lower highs, lower highs. So CVTI, man, very, very weak. Stage four. On the monthly stage four on the weekly um, what it's got going for it are these levels here that might hold that support that might hold right here and so you wait for those bounces and then you see if you start turning around if you get a red candle on the weekly then you know that you've turned over so if you don't get a red candle uh, a nice red candle not just a red candle with a, a, a big lower wick that means a lot of buyers came in that's a weaker red candle but a full red candle like this one right here in the february 25th that was really a sign that we were turning uh, turning back down you even had a slight close below weekly defined support barely and then you kept going down 
So let's see if it bounces here. If it goes through, if it doesn't, let's see if it's going to bounce. A little shallower bounce right here, close to this uh, breakdown line, close towards a declining 30 week average. And once it turns back down, you could add positions until you know the rest of the game, until the price action actually closes above the 30 week average. Or you get a violation of a on the fourth point of a trend line. So here, one, one, two. So there's no trend line yet built. So we'll have to wait for a third hit. And then on the fourth, if it breaks, take half a position, whichever happens first. And that's it, man. There are tons of these. Always look for the weakest of the week. Don't focus on the medium, on average. That's what uh, playing the index is. It's fun to, to for bragging rights. Oh, the SPX went down or whatever. But at the end of the day, there, there's some strong stocks pulling it up and there's some weak stocks pulling it down. And if you focus on the weakest uh, markets, the Russell, if you weak and you focus on the weakest uh, instruments within it, you'll have increased probabilities of having a good trade. And since we're closer to the end of the economic cycle than the beginning, um, that's what I'm going to be looking for. Embryonic, uh, the worst of the worst. And if ever the market really starts rolling over, these ones should really start suffering even more, guys. And then we'll get more and more uh, A++ setups, stage 4 declines. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>